welcome to Pasture Poultry Talk, episode number 43. I'm your host, Mike Badger, and today we're going to continue our conversation with Jeff Maddox as we roll down the highway on a recent trip to Arkansas. Um, as, as the previous episode, you'll hear some road noise, but everything else should be clear. It's kind of like just driving down the road, chatting with your friend while you're, while you're uh, doing 70, 75 down the highway. In this episode, Jeff talks about molting pasture poultry uh, flocks, laying hens, and this is really kind of a divisive issue. Usually, pasture flocks opt for the happy accident type of molting, where all the birds just kind of come in and go out at different times, and it's really unorganized, unplanned, and and as you'll hear Jeff talk about, really has ramifications for your second lay cycle. If you're going to go through more than one lay cycle, molting your birds in a in a controlled way is important. And and Jeff provides this information and it tells us how we can do it in a humane way. Humane being the operative word there. And I think once you hear this, you'll understand that there's always multiple ways to do things, and we get we get blindsided and and judgmental based on the way the commercial industry uh, does things in, in such a such a rough kind of heavy-handed way. Uh, that's not what we're going to talk about here today. We're going to find out why birds won't. We're going to we're going to talk about how pasture poultry producers can use molting to achieve a productive second and third lay cycle. Um, we're going to talk about the right time and the humane way to molt a hen. We're going to we're going to talk about the benefit of forcing a molt versus letting it happen accidentally or naturally or uh, on the bird's own time schedule. Uh, we're going to talk about how to bring the hens out of a molt with proper lighting techniques. And actually, the proper lighting techniques, this is relevant re- whether you're molting or not. Lighting your birds, if you if you need to bring them from, say, 10, 10 hours of, of daylight up to 15 hours, you can't just flip a switch and let that happen. You have to do it uh, in in some kind of structured way. So that's we're gonna we're gonna talk about how to how to get those birds back up to lay with by gradually increasing their lighting, and we'll wrap it up with just a brief discussion on a, on one of the common reasons for an unexpected molt. So before we jump into the car here and and talk with Jeff, I just want to remind you that. I have a Facebook set up for the podcast. It's uh, Pasture Poultry Talk. If you go to Facebook, check it out. Uh, you can join. I think you have to request to join. I'm not sure if that's with all Facebook groups or not, but I will approve it. Just to, just accept it. I want to encourage you to to go there, sign up, and uh, and just fire off some questions. Coming up here very soon, we're going to do a question episode or two. Um, I really like the uh, the Q and A model of of uh of chicken talk and and pastured poultry um you may know that that is part of my app of responsibilities we do a a, a monthly call-in show called ask appa we hold it at eight o'clock eastern on the third tuesday of the month so that means we have one coming up on june 21st it'll be 8 p.m you can check out the appa website for that information and and uh, I'll post it in the show notes but in the meantime if you want to just fire off a few questions for me specifically to ask I know there's there's always questions I have a few piled up and I'm sorry I didn't haven't gotten to the, all those just yet I am silent but you are not forgotten one last kind of promo here is Badger's Millside Farm and that's my online web store for poultry processing equipment and chicken girls and roasters the chicken girls and roasters are awesome so check it out. It's millsidefarm.com. Um, I've I've used most of the equipment on there. I recommend all the equipment that I sell. I'm able to uh, to give you the lowdown on how to use it on farm, and and talk you through some of the common uh, scenarios and, and examples that you might find. Without further ado, let's see what Jeff says. All right. So we want to talk a little bit about molting, what it is, why we might do it, and all the practical stuff that a manager might need to know. So I guess Jeff, go ahead and start us out. What is what is molding? Molding is actually a natural occurrence based on the instinct of the chicken. That when the days of the year, or when the daylight starts getting shorter in the fall of the year, 
and gets below a certain level, generally around 12 hours of daylight or less, <clears throat> that a hen starts to think about bolting, stopping the lay, and storing body fat for the winter. This is a completely natural event. So, molting the chicken, and then during the winter time, that chicken or that laying hen would live off of that stored fat, plus whatever they're able to find, you know, while scavenging through the winter time. But there's not a lot to eat out there. So what would happen is they'd, they'd use up all of their stored body fat, and in the spring, when the day started to get longer, and there was new food sources available, they would come back in to lay naturally. This is how nature intended molting to occur. So there's no reason why that we can't work with this system within our pasture poultry environment to recycle these hens to be beneficial for more than one lay cycle. But we need to help the hen do it right uh, so that she can be a productive hen in a second or third cycle. Okay, so then what I guess two questions to lead us into the next points here when is the right time to molt and what is the right procedure in a humane way you know trying to work with nature which is what we're all about trying to get a hint to molt sometime probably in the month of or you know early October early anytime during the month of October is kind of like that target zone when it's probably best to think about molting that hen and the simplest way to do it is just to decrease their light, uh, you know, down to seven or eight hours. Uh, and at the same time, let's put them on a lower energy, lower calcium feed and try and get their body weight back down to near that bullet weight or the weight that they were when they started production in the beginning. So to do that, <clears throat> the easiest thing to do is offer free choice grit, offer free choice oyster shell, and then limit feed them roughly four to five ounces of whole oats every day per hen per day. And this is a high fiber, low energy diet that they're not going to gain weight on. And we're going to slowly get rid of all the internal body fat that she stored up from being probably overfed while she was a laying hen. And then how long do you need to feed them that diet? They're going to probably be on that low calorie diet for close to eight weeks, uh, eight to 12. And you need to weigh and monitor the birds. So you need a starting weight when you start the molt, do a random selection of about 10% of the flock, write down the weights, and then monitor that. We're looking to lose somewhere around 20% of their body weight is usually the target number okay. before we start bringing them back into production. So contrast then usually people have this a real negative reaction to molting and what's the what's the practice that usually has people up in arms so the practice that has everybody up in arms is where they take away all the feed completely take away the feed completely take away the light and even in some cases take away the water for up to 36 or 48 hours and this is pretty cruel and inhumane and at the same time they're putting them on a highly restrictive diet uh, <clears throat> where the bird never gets a sensation of being full and you know very very poor quality feed that doesn't have a lot of nutrition added to it okay good thank you because it's important to have that contrast and in, in what is deemed a forced mold by the commercial industry it's assumed that you're going to lose 10 to 15 percent of the flock because they're not going to be able to adjust to that sudden reduction of light feed fodder and all of the above and the stress is actually going to kill them before anything else okay so you so you basically just told us that a forced mole if you want to carry these birds into a second lay cycle you're going to be down for two weeks or two months, eight weeks. Why would you do it and not just let the birds do it naturally? Letting the bird do it naturally, they're all going to come in and out of a molt on their own when their instinct or their little biological clock in their head says it's time to molt. So you're going to have birds going in and out of molt whenever they think it's time. 
and they're never going to lose that <clears throat> internal stored body fat that's laying in around the uh, egg channel and the ovaries so their next lay cycle is not going to be as nearly as productive or profitable as having some level of control as far as losing that body weight and getting the calcium rebuilt back into the bones with the free choice oyster shells. So in this scenario, you're basically going to be the Richard Simmons for the chicken to get them in shape so they can get ready for their second cycle. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. Right on. After that two months, how long does it take before you see egg production come back? So after that eight weeks or whatever it takes to get that body weight down, bringing the birds back, once you hit the target weight that you're looking for by feeding the oats in the low calorie diet, uh, and you want to feed them also all the alfalfa that they'll eat, um, the more green you give them, the better. That'll transpose right into the egg yolks on the next cycle. But once you hit that target weight, then you're going to put them back over to the layer feed. <clears throat> and about a week into the layer feed, then you're going to start increasing the lighting to them to start stimulating them to make them think that it's springtime again and bring them back into production. That will probably take another four weeks. So you're looking at a total downtime between 12 and 16 weeks. Then that puts you basically into the January time frame. So you're, yeah. before, you're from October to January, you're down. In January you start coming up is when, but there's also a lot of, there's an egg shortage happening usually in January anyway. <clears throat> right, that's a good time to bring them back into production, uh, ease them back in. And when we're talking about lighting, lighting is very important to do it correctly. So you can only add five minutes a day or 30 minutes per week. You can't just turn the lights on and give them a whole bunch at one time or you're going to overstimulate them and you're going to fail to bring them up in production. So we're trying to make them think that it's springtime where each day is a little bit longer than the previous day, and that's roughly five to seven minutes per day. So again, that's basically mimicking the natural cycles that the birds are exactly. used to. Right. Then would you ever would you ever molt them a second time? Depending on how well the flock did on the first lay cycle and the second lay cycle, I might lay, might molt them for a second time. Uh, every flock's going to be a little bit different in their profitability and production, so it, you'll just have to determine that based on the flock. Um, you're looking at body condition, egg condition, uh, total flock mortality, uh, is there any disease in the flock? So you have to take everything into account before you decide if you're going to do a second molt, help the birds through a second molt, and or if it's not going to be worth your while. So you'll be looking at basically for some production records to help you make that decision. <coughs> and then I assume there's going to be a drop off in year one and two in egg production. So if you got your, your production bird laying 80% maybe in the first year, what can you expect in the second year? Well, hopefully your production birds laying more than 80% in the first year. <laughs> a good manager should assume 93%, a peak of 93%, with a first year lay average of around 84% from day one of laying till 50 weeks of lay. So if we do the molt correctly under a really good management scheme, uh, we can actually see a peak somewhere around 85 or 86% on the second lay cycle with a flock average of about 78% production. And we're gonna drop about 10% each year. Uh, each time we molt, bring them back into production. Does that 10% drop <coughs> also apply to the standard breeds? It does, it pretty much applies to the standard breeds. You know, They give you their best effort on the first lay cycle and then on the second, you know, just they're never going to be as good as they were the first time if they're better on the second lay cycle than they were on the first time then you really screwed something up the first time <laughs> right so I guess it's a, what, stating what might be might be an obvious thing that if you're going to be projecting doing your numbers for your flock and estimating profitability then if you're going to be, know that you'll keep them through that first molt it's probably to, wise to calculate your 
your production cost based on that lower rate of light. It should have, you should always calculate your your economics or your budget based on what that production what that expected production level is going to be. And you always take your possible production level and reduce it by 10% just for a safety zero, safety net. And then if you get the extra 10%, be happy about it. And if you're going to schedule your mold, think about when your highest egg sales are and then back that off by 12 weeks and think about trying to start your mold at that time. And you can do the mold almost any time of the year if you have the right type of housing. Uh, <clears throat> and just a matter of gradually reducing the amount of light that the birds receive and so you need some sort of a light tight house and you may need to leave them temporarily confined for a little bit longer period so that you can make them think it's winter time. Okay, and then one last question for me. What are the, what are some of the things that will force the flock into a, an unintended mold at the wrong time? Like basically the, the management faux pas. The number one reason for birds to go into an unexpected mold is not being able to access water. So <clears throat> any any lack of water or any water restriction whatsoever is going to drastically affect egg production within a 24 to 48 hour period. Um, you know, with, they could be without feed for a half a day, but they can only be without water for an hour or two. Anything over that, you're going to see a, a reduction in overall production hey that'll wrap us for this episode thanks for listening don't forget to check us out on the web our home is at pasturedpoultrytalk.com pasturedpoultrytalk.com never miss another episode again go there find out how Till next time thank you